Welcome back to IGN Live at E3 2018. I'm James Doug, Duggan, and I've convinced a few people at DICE to let us get our hands on Battlefield 5. That's right, this is an exclusive. So let's welcome one of those people right now. This is design director Daniel Berlin here to talk us through Battlefield 5. We have some gameplay. I've had a doozy of a week. It's I can been, imagine. Man, the, the road up to E3 for us at IGN is stressful, but I've been looking forward to this, and this is definitely the moment where it all pays off. Sweet. So I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to grill you about Battlefield 5, Cheers. what we can expect, and we're going to see some gameplay. So let's get right to it. Uh, we have some new modes, Airborne and the Return of Majority Rule Conquest. Yes. They all combine in this really cool way which is Grand Operations. So tell me about Grand Operations. So yeah, the, uh, the Grand Operations is the, is the successor of the Operations game mode that we introduced in, um, in Battlefield 1. Um, but we're kind of changing it up a bit. Um, there were some, some problems with, with, with the mode, I think, in Battlefield 1. Often you could play the mode, but you actually got stuck, for example, fighting over one single church for almost an hour because you didn't actually uh, progress because the defender stopped you. So we're changing the format in general for, um, for Grand Operation and we're introducing the concept of uh, in-game days. And these are not calendar days. Uh, these are, yeah, <laughs> this is confusing sometimes. Uh, but it's actually, it, it's not calendar days. A day is represented by a match and it's approximately uh, 15 to 20 minutes long. And so when you're playing a Grand Operation, you're actually playing through these fictional days. Um, and it's a modular mode in that sense because we can actually um, customize and set up what mode we want to be representative on each so day. So this is a lot like custom playlists, which is a feature that every Battlefield fan is familiar with from servers running different playlists at the same time of modes, which is really exciting. Uh, I just want to toss it over to the weapons here. Uh, yeah. We saw a, a Gewer, and this is obviously World War II. Yes. We're advanced chronologically from World War I. Mm -hmm. So tell me what's changed in terms of the arsenal. I think in, in, in general we've been, we've been, been looking closely at um, the gameplay in general and how, how the weapons work um, and taking cues from the community in general to see like, okay, what, what does the community want in terms of weaponry um, and how does actually the weapon work? So the thing we're looking at most and foremost is that we want to introduce some more of a, a predictability to the weapons in that sense. Um, predictable uh, recall patterns, for example. We want players to be able to pick up a gun, play with it, and then learn how it works. And that comes from that predict uh, predictability in terms of uh, recall patterns. And also moving away from um, randomness with the weapons. Um, so basically the general mentality that we have on the team when we're looking at the weapons is where the weapon is aiming is where the bullet is gonna go. Sure. And if there's recoil and if there's things that like, to, if, if you're using a, a burst fire weapon, for example, and you decide to go uh, fully automatic, you're going to see the weapon start to kicking and stuff like that. But we always want you to be able to mitigate that through player skill. Yeah. So you can always get better with the weapons. And so we're looking at building here, and this is a, a new and very welcome, if I might add, feature to Battlefield. Yes. I remember at Bad Company, uh, it would get to a point where the entire battlefield was completely leveled, yeah. playing on this barren wasteland. Yeah. Thankfully, you can rebuild. So tell me about building. Uh, are you able to just build in presets? Can you build anywhere? What's the deal? So it, 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 it is exactly what you say. It's a system that marries really well with our destruction system. Uh, because yes, you can, you, you can bring a lot of the stuff down in Battlefield. It's one of the things, and we introduced it in Bad Company too. Um, so this marries really well with that. But um, we have, uh, in, in, in our take of this, is that we, we have a select preset of locations that you can build, um, but it's, it's very, very extensive. So every single house, for example, you can board them up, you can board up windows. If you destroy a house, as you can see here in, the, in, in, in this footage, that you can actually rebuild structures and bring it back, but you can uh, build sandbags, build the tank traps, build the trenches, build fox, foxholes with machine guns. And any class can do this, yes? Any class can, uh, can pick up the toolbox, but the support class is the one that is the Ooh. most proficient at it. And the support class also has more utility. For example, machine guns and stationary weapons is something that the support class can build, but something that actually um, uh, the, the other classes can't. So speaking of classes, tell me about the class changes from Battlefield 1 going to Battlefield 5. Yeah, so what we're doing is that we're, we're introducing what we're calling archetypes, which is basically uh, subclasses of the classes that we have. And they have um, uh, unique gameplay styles, for example. So at the build at uh, EA Play, you'll be able to, to select the support class, for example. And this, the, there is the standard support um, uh, player available, but you can also choose one of the archetypes, which is the machine gunner. And that machine gunner has a specific type of abilities in terms of perks that, that, that kind of angles that, that, um, that character towards a specific type of gameplay style. So that, 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 that so subclass and archetype has access to specific weaponry, specific gadgetry, and specific perks that leans it towards being uh, a master at a certain task on the battlefield. 
that's really exciting uh, to kind of choose an archetype and live up a specific class fantasy. We're watching a German tank destroyer mow through these houses yes. uh, in Battlefield 5 here on IGN Live D3 2018. So tell me, uh, in terms of vehicles, what we can expect in terms of differences from Battlefield 1. Obviously, the planes are a lot faster and the tanks as well, correct? I think the, the biggest thing I, I want to mention is one of the systems that we're actually uh, that we're introducing, which is called the, uh, the squad reinforcements, which is actually gives you access to call in through squad play. If you're the person that plays in your squad, if you're the person that do execute um, um, squad actions and execute t team play actions such as capturing point, you would generate uh, specific uh, squad reinforcement. You can call in super powerful vehicles through this, like the Churchill uh, flamethrower tank or the Sturm Tiger tanks, and these are squad-centered uh, vehicles that really, really, when they come in, and if you're not playing a particular classroom, if you're not in a vehicle that can handle uh, these vehicles, you should pretty much just leave. Interesting, that sounds like a pretty big feature. So there's a lot more control over the ability to get in a vehicle. I remember back in like the Battlefield 2 days, just hoping you spawned by the helicopter was mm -hmm. kind of the mechanism to be a pilot. But now you have greater control over that, is what you're saying? Well, the, the, the how you spawn into the vehicles is, uh, is, is sim similar to the system in BF1, but the, the uh, squad reinforcement ones are, are, are the ones that you actually have to earn them, uh, and then you can call them in, and they're, they're, they're exclusive for your squad to get into. So it's a squad-specific, uh, super-powerful vehicle that you can use to turn, turn, turn a match around, basically. And within this system, there are, there's additional stuff, like, uh, like the V1 rocket, for example, is also a part of these squad reinforcements that you can mm. call in. Very interesting. One of my favorite things about Battlefield 1, uh, whether intentional or, or not, is <laughs> the arsenal that was available during that time and how that kind of slowed everything down. Yeah. I think I got a little bit of fatigue around Battlefield 4 when it was just that guy who's really good at mm. a helicopter spawn killing me over and over. Obviously no helicopters in World War I or World War II. <laughs> um, so was that an intentional choice? And I guess my question is, are we kind of getting back to that eventually? Or uh, for now, are we keeping it very basic, very boots on the ground? I think in terms of uh, what weaponry we decided to go with early, so it's like we have this aspect that we want to kind of show players um, the, the unseen, the untold parts of the war. So there's going to be weaponry in there that is going to be like, oh, I haven't seen this before, you know. Um, but there's also going to be those, those very, very iconic weapons, such as the MG42, uh, which is just a complete beast. And that is one of those weapons that is uh, particularly effective at uh, bullet penetration, for example, just ripping through buildings. So um, if you buy part of one of those things and you have enemies clustering up in a building, they can't be safe from you anymore. You can just shoot straight through the walls and take them out. So uh, clearly a little bit indicative of the fact that it is a secret, so you may not be able to, to tell me about anything here, but the secret weapons of World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, are we getting into like weird occult stuff? What, what's going on <laughs> with those? Is it, or is this just the artillery gun that can fire across the, the English Channel? Yeah, like those, those, those were the, the, the things that I mentioned before. The secret weapons are those, those, those very powerful tanks that you can get in, like the, the, the flame-throwing Churchill tank or the Storm Tiger or, for, say, the V1 rocket that, that you gain access to by executing team play actions, playing the objective, and uh, playing with your squad. So that's what you get uh, when you get access to those secret weapons of World War II. Fantastic. All right, we're seeing a little bit of gameplay here of an SMG uh, with a, what is essentially a red dot sight. Yeah. So you're going to be able to level up your weapons and level up your character, Absolutely. unlock aesthetics and, and different things. Explain yeah. exactly what that means in terms of gameplay. Yeah, so we, we're going much, much deeper in terms of progression as a whole this time around. Um, it's something that's been really, really asked from, from the community. That they really want to, us to go deep on, on, on player progression. So when you're playing with these weapons and we're playing with specific classes, you will level up that class and you will gain um, access to new weaponry. And when you're playing with a specific weapon, you will level up that weapon. And you can decide then, OK, how do I want my weapon to look? How do I want my weapon to play? Um, and you, you can actually, when you're playing the game, you can decide to, to, to customize a weapon a certain way, like an MP40, for example, and then you can actually get another MP40, and you can customize that differently so it has a different type of playstyle. So you can have multiple versions of the same weapon and then customize them differently, both in terms of look and gameplay. Uh, and that, I think, leads to the, the obvious transition to monetization. And I think that Battlefield is a game as a service at its core, and it's something that you want to support long term. You announced the DLC will be free, maps mm -hmm. will be free, and that is fantastic because yeah, you're no longer uh, segmenting the community, which I think is great. But what are we looking at? Are, are battle packs still around? Uh, and uh, am no. I going to be able to spend more money in Battlefield 5 if I want to? How is that going to work? So the general mentality that we have going into this is that Battlefield has never been paid to win. So Battlefield would never be paid to win. So at launch, like, 
if you have anything that is this pur purchasable, it's going to be cosmetics only. You can never pay to get a gameplay advantage in Battlefield 5. Wonderful. Great answer. Uh, let's talk about Tides of War. This is really interesting. It's, it's kind of analogous to maybe Fortnite or Overwatch's seasons. This is an incentive mm. to play uh, in a short amount of time, correct? So talk me through what Tides of War are. Tides of War is like we, we want people to go uh, on a journey through, um, through World War II. Um, and as, so, so, so when we start the game, um, we have a certain set of maps and a certain amount of content. But since we're now removing premium, like you mentioned, you will go on this journey with your friends, and, and everyone is included. There's, there's, no, there, there's no doors, no payment to, to get into this. And as you're going through the types of war, we will take you to new theaters of war um, and introducing new types of gameplay through the tier, the, theaters of war, basically. And what we're doing as you're playing through the different theaters of war, um, unlocking new weapons, unlocking new vehicles, and so on and so forth, that's what builds your company. And the company is a huge thing for, for Battlefield V. Um, it's, it's, it's your personal company where you will add new soldiers, you will add new um, class archetypes, for example, and you will add new weaponry, new vehicles, new airplanes, new tanks, new customization to those vehicles, and so on and so forth. So as you will go through the different types of war, um, you will actually see your company expand and then change the way they look and change the way they play. We've been speaking a lot about multiplayer, and frankly, that's where I spend 99.9% .9 of my time in Battlefield. <laughs> but let's uh, speak about these little vignettes, the, the single player, or actually now their co-op, correct? Well, there, there, there's a separate co-op mode called, called Combined Arms, uh, and then there are the, the war story. The, the, so we bring, we're bringing back that uh, anthology format that we had from, uh, uh, from Battlefield 1. It felt like we really found uh, our way, you know, the, the, the way... Uh, we do uh, single player um, at, for, for Battlefield. So we're bringing that back. Um, and what, what you saw in the uh, trailer today was a snort li li like short little snippet of um, uh, what, what we call the, the war story Nordlys, which is, uh, I think I got this correct, but it is Norwegian for Northern Lights. Mm. Uh, and in this war story, you follow a young resistance fighter uh, in the midst of the, uh, the German-occupied uh, Norway. Uh, and in her quest to, to, to save herself and to, to save her family. Now, this is really exciting. We're looking at some sniper gameplay. I am completely guilty of sitting in the back, not pushing the objective, <laughs> but having a disgustingly good kill-death ratio. I love sniping in Battlefield 1, uh, and, and I can't wait to try it in Battlefield 5, and there's a feature that's really exciting to me, and that's bullet penetration. Yes. So tell me about high-caliber bullet penetration. Yeah, so we're kind of taking a caliber approach to this, uh, to this game, and we want to have the same mentality in terms of like what you expect to happen is, is this going to happen? So higher caliber bullets uh, will be able to penetrate thicker materials, uh, and lower caliber bullets will not, basically. Uh, but the general mentality that we have is if you're, if you're standing in front of a door with a pistol and you expect you, you should be able to shoot through this door with, with, with the pistol, you should be able to. But you might not be able to shoot through the wall. That's where the he heavy caliber weapon comes in. So it's, it's all about kind of like grounding it in that sense of believability. So what I would expect to happen in the real world would happen in the game. Very cool. I have to ask about Battle Royale, or as I like to call it, Battle Royale Field. <laughs> uh, my new terminology. Do you have any details to share on that? Um, and what are you trying to accomplish there? How are you going to make this uh, different or unique, but also keep it Battlefield? I, I don't have any details as right now, but what I can say is that, uh, just that thing, we want to make it uniquely Battlefield. Uh, so we're, we're going to lean heavily into the things that makes Battlefield Battlefield. That is the team play, that is the destruction, that is the vehicle. Uh, so that those are going to be uh, strong aspects um, of this, uh, this offering, basically. Wonderful. Daniel Berlin, design director at DICE. I cannot wait. I am very much looking forward to Battlefield 5. We're going to catch our breath, but there's still much more to cover here at IGN Live at E3. Still ahead, Code Vein and an exclusive look at Dead or Alive 6, so don't go anywhere. <laughs>